So this uh, mess of wires is one step closer to being an integrated bit of circuitry I can fit on a PCB. So down here, instead of having an external power supply, I've got a DC-DC converter which is running off the 12 volts, which generates the 5 volts that this VGA to LVDS board needs. So if I put that and that on a PCB, PCB up, well, this adapter board for the FPC connector. Um, I think we're basically there then. All we need is some wires coming in with power and the line that turns the um, power supply on. Or I could just leave a link on there, I suppose. And that will give me a PCB. So it should fit sort of here somewhere. There's enough room under the back case. The only other thing, I, I haven't managed to find the 51 pin connector, so what I've got here is the 51 pin connector that requires a plug rather than just the cable, and I've 3D printed a spacer which goes in and sort of creates a plug, so it's a bit hokey but it works. And this all works, so the DC-DC converter is capable of powering this board, and the whole thing powers up, so now it's running completely off the main supply that comes in here. It uh, doesn't need the external power supply at all. Only other problem is the VGA connection, but that will probably just be a cable going in. And the uh, VGA connection will be on the PCB on this board, which will be mounted on the PCB. And um, that should give me a essentially a VGA monitor. And uh, yeah, this all works as well, actually. It's not on at the moment because I'm poking around with things, but. Uh, I have had it on for quite a period of time just to check that it doesn't overheat or anything. The PCBs are back and the mounting holes for once I've put them in the right place so everything seems okay. The position for the flat cable is a little bit out. Could have done with maybe being about two centimetres higher but I think we can get away with that. So next steps to build everything up, put the boards and so on on the PCB. The VGA to LVDS board, the mounting holes for that seem okay as well. So that will go there. DC DC converter that I'm using, where is it here? Oops, that's quite a lot bigger than the footprint I've left on the board, so uh, it will still fit, but that'll have to be mounted somehow. I might drill a hole in the board to mount the particular one that I've got here. It's not really laid out for any particular DC DC converter, it's just four holes in a footprint and there's a lot of space behind it so you can put almost anything there that works. So a little bit of wire in here for the cable off the uh, where is it? This cable here. So that will go I'll cut it off and they'll be soldered into that footprint there. So this connector doesn't fit in there. It's a 30 pin connector anyway. So there'll be wires running over, a bit like there is on the original prototype. And then wires from the power cables will come in here. And the buttons, I'm hoping to wire up the buttons, which are over on the other side of the um, television. I'm, I need a button to turn it on, because um, this button here, which comes with um, the VGA to LVDS PCB, you need that in order to turn the... Uh, adapter on so I'm going to try and rewire the PCB which has got it's quite a lot of button, buttons over there there's what is it, eight buttons so uh, probably rewire the power button the on off button to be the on off button there is a footprint for a blue pill in case I need to do funky stuff with um, some inputs to the power supply or something or time it out or do something like that at the moment I'll probably just make up something equivalent to the prototype which means everything will be hardwired just to get everything going, make sure I haven't made any mistakes on the PCB. So next step, populate it. Now I've built up a PCB, uh, fits quite nicely on the mounting holes, the flex cable comes in here with a little bit of plastic I 3D print in order to get the cable to actually fit in the connector. LVDS to VGA board there, DC-DC converter here, so that's off the prototype, I've got some others coming. Um, I didn't have enough to make two up so I had to do that. I've drilled some holes manually through the board to fit this DC-DC converter. 
and wired it in. This is the LVDS signals going from this board over to the flat cable connector. I might have a problem with this VGA connector because it's a bit close to the uh, edge of the board, uh, edge of the frame here and uh, oh, if I get the cover <coughs> uh, it might work, it might not, I might have to cut a bit of that off in order to get the uh, VGA connector plugged into a cable. I've wired everything in, I didn't want to mess around trying to find the correct connectors and so on for various signals and things. Um, that connector and that connector all come out to other places so uh, I can get to these if I need to. I haven't populated the blue pill, I think I'm just going to power this thing up like I was before, at least for now, and uh, see what happens. So, uh, about ready to switch it on I think, and see what's going to happen. Right, so I uh, powered it up and uh, found that it didn't work but I'd miswired the PCB and shorted the 12 volt supply out so that was okay, that must have been current limited and uh, once I'd sorted that out powered it up again and there we go, it's working so we're in the sort of state that the prototype wiring was in um, and it's working so it's a little open SCAD model there and it's not the cleanest display in the world and the weak spot in all of this is the connector with the flat um, the flat cable going into it it's just a little bit dodgy I think I'm going to have to try and find either the proper cable or the proper socket for that um, if, you, uh, if you wiggle the cable I'll go around the back and wiggle it a bit there's definite changes to the uh, the sort of noise there. I think maybe the wiring, the LVDS wiring as well, is a little bit. No, no, it's actually a bit more stable than it was the first time I powered it up. So that's now in a state where it's just got the ordinary original mains cable going in. All the power's generated on that PCB. There's a bit of streaking here. I'm not entirely sure what that is and how that could actually happen on a digital connection like that. Although it could be on the VGA, could easily be on the VGA cable, which is actually quite a long one. It's about five metres long, so <laughs> might have something to do with it. Uh, yeah, everything's powered off mains, and the only other thing I've got going in there is the um, VGA connector. I've left the link on the PCB uh, on the power supply PCB. Um, which holds the thing on, so the, at the moment you plug the mains in, power it up, it comes on and the um, VGA to LVDS PCB detects the signal coming in and turns itself on as well, which is quite nice. So I don't really need the buttons on the back, you could just have it like that and you'd have a VGA monitor, which I might do. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to wait for the DC-DC converters that I've ordered to arrive and what I'll probably do is make another one up and put that on the second TV that I've got, or the second screen anyway. I've got no stand for that and I've also realised I've got no mains cable for it either. <laughs> so I'll probably have to do some sort of bodge for that because it's a really weird connector. And um, see whether that screen works. I don't know if that LCD is working. This one obviously is, but this um, LCD was the one that I bought to try and get the other TV going. So this isn't the original TV, um, it's actually running very little of the original television that I was given. Um, so yeah, I'll try that, see if it works. If it doesn't, strip it down for parts. If it does, then I've got another um, monitor. It's quite large, it's fairly low resolution. It's quite nice having a large monitor like that for certain purposes. So uh, yeah, a lot neater and tidier inside. and. Um, that's about it I think. I think we're done there. I just need to get the back on and make sure that I can access a VGA cable or the socket or either have a wired cable running out of it or somehow make that socket on the PCB accessible. I've, I've got a little bit more height I could put on it. It's on standoffs at the moment so I could raise it up and down to try and see whether I can get to that socket through one of the um, 
one of the gaps in the rear rear panel. There we go.